Welcome to part three. The real problem in education is not students having no interest or being easily distracted or that they don't have the brains to keep up. The real problem is that the teacher tends to forget that they are responsible for the work they are evaluating. You know, we can make excuses for this, but I want to tell you the story of Jamie Escalante. There is a movie called Stand and Deliver. It tells the true story of Jamie Escalante. Now, Jamie was an American teacher responsible for teaching 16-year-old Hispanic kids in a really rough area. These kids came from broken homes, abused, violent, gang members and into drugs, and went to a school that only ever turned out social misfits. Its students seldom got a good job. But Jamie wanted to change this. He wanted to give these kids a real chance in life. So he got the parents involved, and together they taught these kids the rules of language so they knew how to formulate information in the right way. And because of his dedication and the ways he inspired these children, they came to believe in themselves and what could be possible. In their final exams, all these students performed very highly. In fact, they all got such high scores that the school board thought they must have cheated and made them reset their exam. Yet again, all these students demonstrated a very high ability in the test. All the excuses made for them and for the school failing to teach them better in that they came from a low socio-economic environment and were genetically less capable than the white kids they were being compared to didn't hold water. It was simply that their teacher had taught them how to think better and to be more aware of the rules of the game. So kids who were long classified as a waste of time came to demonstrate a very high proficiency in their education because of the teacher who taught them. I've had the same experience, just as many other teachers. So such achievement is totally possible for any teacher, but many don't know how to achieve this, much because of the ways they were trained, or they don't believe they can do this with the classes they have because they don't have the experience to know how. And anyway, other teachers don't make this difference, so they're not blamed for not achieving what others don't. In the United Kingdom last year, 10,000 students were expelled from school or shunted to some lesser education and so deprived of the right of a normal education because their teachers couldn't bring them up to scratch. If these students had been entered into their finals and gained the low marks expected of them, their schools would have lost prestige and rank in the league tables. So instead of trying to deal with the problem and finding ways to inspire and educate these 10,000 students better, their schools got rid of the problem. They got rid of the kids. This happens in too many countries, not because teachers are lazy, but because they themselves were never trained to know how to tell a story, to inspire minds, and to know the real importance of explaining rules clearly and keeping these alive in the minds of the students. After all, the only way the child can safely navigate their way through the school system is by their ability in language, and this by their competency with its rules. Look at the example of uh, mathematics, 6 divided by 2, brackets 2 plus 1, 2. Those who don't know the rule will work out the problem by multiplying 2 by the brackets and end up with the answer 1, which is wrong. Those who do know the rules and know to work from the left will divide 6 by 2 to get 3 and multiply the brackets to get 9. So the students who give the answer of 9 will be thought to be cleverer than those who got 1. Yet the only explanation is that they knew the rules. This is, this is exactly the point for spelling or grammar, and so are later thought to be dyslexic or more simply just to take up the average and never get top marks. Genetic inheritance has nothing to do with this performance in school. But when the teacher comes across lower performers who are slow to respond and can't see to understand easily what the teacher is trying to explain to them, whether this, in, whether this is in maths, comprehension, or even reading, they assume there is a genetic base which they can't do much about. This mindset is, of course, a strategy of education, because society never wanted the most of its citizens to think too much. So a wide variation of ability was always engineered through social strategies. But the world our children will live and work in will demand a totally different quality of citizen than school is now producing. I explain this in my fifth book, Preparing a New World Education. T. 
teachers have been trained and are conditioned to think of just creating a happy class with an accepted range of ability, some smart, some not smart. This is what we think allows each student to learn as best as they can. But as I've tried to show you here, their best is what we make our best to be. So teachers need to accept that they are only as good as they were in the last lesson. And from this, try to be more creative in how clearly and how sensitively they teach the rules of language. And then, how they keep these rules and the subject matter alive, relevant and with purpose. As they, as they move from lesson to lesson and year, year, and to, year to year. You know, teachers at this level are responsible for teaching certain rules. How well all the kids know these rules will depend upon their proficiency in the next year. And that teacher is then has to teach them their rules, but also to pick up the ones who didn't understand very well here as much as they can. And they go to the next year and the next year. It's very hard for the teacher to keep up explaining all the, all the information the kids have, have not understood previously. It is very difficult. But it's not impossible. I have created a teacher training course to show you how to do this. I hope you'd like to attend and join me to find out how we can really help all children to be better prepared for the world they will live in. And remember, we don't mark a great students on their intelligence. We judge them on how well we have helped them to understand the rules of language how we have inspired their confidence to explore the subject matter, and how we set free their ability to dream that gave them purpose to grab the fantastic opportunities we are offering them.